This is Sis Julia, and these are your announcements for the month of March. Our theme for 2022 is Go For It. Mount Hebron must go for it and do it well. To support our church, there are three ways to give. Gimlify. We are listed on the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. On Cash App, our cash tag is dollar sign Mount Hebron 2651. You can use your envelopes and put your tithe and offering in the basket. Let's get big. It keeps the church going. Our next church meeting will be Saturday, March 12th at 12 noon. In the sanctuary, all active members are encouraged to attend. Sunday, March 13th at 11 a.m. is Unity Day. Our very own Dr. Geraldine Sheely, the assistant to the pastor, will be preaching asking each member of any ministry to give $10. If you are a part of any ministry, give $5 for Unity Day. The hashtag for the celebration is MHUnityDay. Sunday, March 27th at 11 a.m. is a pastor's birthday celebration. Service guest, preacher, Reverend Dr. Amon Flowers, Pastor Life Church in Hanover, Maryland. The hashtag for the celebration is HBD Dr. Wimple. Bible study will be Wednesday, March 23rd, and Wednesday, March 30th at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. We have Sunday school on Saturdays, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. on Zoom. Blog and info will be posted. Join us! Prayer call continues Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Conclude your evening with prayer. Find us on the web on our website, mounthebron.org. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Let's stay connected. Have a blessed week. Hey, beloved, this is Pastor Whitfield. I want to thank you so much for tuning in with us on today, be it on our Facebook page, YouTube page, or even our website, mounthebron.org. Thank you for tuning in with us. Go ahead and share this video, like, and comment. Also, we are on Givelify, Historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. We are on Cash App, dollar sign, M-O-U-N-T, H-E-B-R-O-N, number two, number six, number five, number one. People of God, we also are worshiping in person Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., 2651 West North Avenue. But right now, let's go into the word of God. And don't forget, God goes with you every step of the way because God goes with you. See you soon. Peace. Daniel, Daniel chapter three. Turn me to Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter three. We're in the Old Testament. Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter three. As we are celebrating our heritage. Daniel chapter 3. As we thank God, we thank God for this Holy Communion Sunday, the second installment of Holy Communion for 2022. We're in Daniel chapter 3, Old Testament book of Daniel chapter 3. Once you have it, please stand to your feet all across the great house. And so we encourage you, beloved, do not miss a Sunday, especially in February, for we don't know what we're going, what's going to happen here in Mount Hebron. But we do know that the spirit of the living God certainly dwells in this place. 
Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. I'm at verse number 8. I'm going to stop at verse number 15. Reading and you're hearing the New King James Standard Version of the text. All who are able, please stand. Daniel chapter 3. Beginning at verse 8, it says these words, Therefore, at the time, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony of all kinds of music, shall found, fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or, or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you? from my hands may be seated may be seated in the house today i want to talk about for a few moments remember who you are remember who you are remember who you are beloved now now more than ever we as a people need to remember who we are Understand, no other culture is asked or even expected to merge their history, merge their experiences, or even merge their celebrations with others. It was always our celebrations, African Americans or those of African descent who are expected to bend and bow so others can feel accepted and included. White supremacy has tried for centuries to make us forget who we are. Even in the religious arena, they want us to, to negate the skin tone of Jesus Christ, declaring as long as his blood is red. Listen, if his skin tone did not matter, why did artists consistently depict Christ as European and not in his true African self? The Bible declared he had hair like lamb's wool and feet like bronze clay. Please remember that our history does not begin with slavery, but it begins in Africa and worldwide. Hit a cliff nose, baby. Blacks influenced the world. The world didn't influence blacks. If they didn't want you to remember who you are, they wouldn't make sure our schools were ill-equipped. If they didn't want you to remember who you are, they wouldn't be liquor stores and carryouts on every other corner instead of grocery stores and libraries. If, if they did not want you to remember who you are, they, they wouldn't infiltrate every system of society to wipe away all positive representations of African Americans and people of African descent. Here it is. They don't want you to remember who you are. But I got to remember on this beautiful Lord's Day, I will remember that black is is beautiful. I will remember uh, that it was our people who shaped civilization. Uh, if it weren't for us, uh, you'd be complaining about how hot it is in the summertime. Uh, but thank God for Frederick Jones, uh, a black man uh, who invented the air conditioner. Uh, if it wasn't for us, uh, kitchen floors and hallways uh, would always be dirty. Uh, but thank God for Thomas Stewart, uh, a black man uh, who created the mop uh, so it could be cleaned and waxed effectively. Uh, if it weren't for us, uh, for 
folk will still need a paper map uh, when they drive and get lost in the streets. Uh, but thank God for Dr. Gladys West, uh, who gave us the GPS uh, and finally got her credit uh, in 2018. Uh, if it weren't for us, uh, more people uh, would have died for COVID-19. Uh, but thank God for Dr. Kizzy Corbett, uh, a black woman uh, who came up with the COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, preach, Pastor Whipple. Uh, let me come help you. Uh, black people, uh, we make life better. Uh, black people, uh, we make living easier. Uh, black people, uh, we make success obtainable. Uh, you better remember who you are. I'm just talking this morning about the remembrance of our identity. Here it is. If you don't remember your history, somebody going to lie and tell it to you. Uh, one, of, one of the greatest examples of remembrance of identity is found in Daniel chapter 3. We know this at the story of the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Please understand, y'all, the beginning of this story is more about power than it is about God. The king, the king, the king who reigned during this time was a narcissistic, arrogant, self-centered king named Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted to go down in history as the greatest king of all time and believed, listen, he believed in order to do that, beloved, he had to oppress people. He had to build a golden statue in his own honor. That's right, y'all. He had a banquet celebrating himself. He wanted all the attention, all of the splendor, all of the spotlight, and all of the shine. The problem came, beloved, the problem came is not everyone in the land was going to lay down so that King Nebuchadnezzar could be up. That's where we find the wonderful three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, these were the three intelligent brothers who were set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. The story, the story that, that every day, the story records rather like every day like clockwork, King Nebuchadnezzar would have three trumpets blown and sound horns, and that would be the signal for everybody in his kingdom to bow down and worship the golden statue of himself. How arrogant are you to build a statue of yourself and to make sure that everybody worships you? Uh, at a certain time, you blow the trumpet, and everybody got to bend down on one knee and say, all hail King Nebuchadnezzar. Well, don't you know, the educated Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remembered who they were, and they refused to bow down to a golden statue. They worshiped y'all. They worshiped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They believed in the God who created the heavens and the earth, and, and they refused to bend a knee to a man who thought he was greater than God. Now, check out the plot twist, baby. King Nebuchadnezzar knew he needed the three Hebrew boys to work over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But his ego, watch this, was bigger than progress. He knew the three Hebrew boys were intelligent leaders who could change Babylon around for the better. But King Nebuchadnezzar wanted power over progress. Don't miss that, y'all. So he changed the rules. He had the young men embarrassed publicly and locked up for standing for their faith and for their people. He tried to flex uh, so he can be the big bad king in the land. He changed the rules because here it is. He chose power over progress. And I know we got some elders in the village in Mount Hebron uh, who can recall when the rules uh, were changed against you. Uh, after well, all you've done for yourself, you got yourself together. Uh, you got out of the projects. You got yourself a degree. Uh, you got yourself a career. Uh, you tried to get yourself a family and live right. But the housing market uh, was purposely made uh, to keep blacks out uh, and keep whites in. Uh, student loan rates skyrocketed uh, and the price of groceries on one side of town uh, aren't the same prices on the other side of town. Uh, they changed the rules, uh, but you got to keep on fighting anyhow. So here it is. King Nebuchadnezzar changed the rules because he chose power over progress. But watch how this thing play out, y'all. I'm at verse number 15 in the text. It's in verse 15 that tests my faith because King Nebuchadnezzar weaponizes their faith, weaponizes their faith belief to discourage them from believing in the one true God. Text said, now if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery in symphony with all types of music. 
and you fall down and worship the image which I have made you good, brothers. If you fall down and worship me, you can live. But if you do not worship me, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a firing furnace. And who is this God who will deliver you from my hands? Oh, shucks now. I love I love, I love how the three Hebrew boys stood their ground in verse number 16. They said, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Let me come help you. Everything does not deserve your response. <laughs> then they said, then they said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And watch this brother. He will deliver us from your hand. Y'all know how the story ended, don't y'all? Y'all went to Sunday school. God didn't show his power in the sanctuary. I'm sorry. That day they didn't jump and shout during praise and worship. God didn't show his power in the graveyard. But on that day, shucks baby, God showed the power of his hand uh, in a fiery furnace. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, the Bible says uh, the king commanded uh, that the heat of the furnace uh, be turned up seven times. Uh, he commanded his men uh, to put Shadrach, uh, Meshach, Shank uh, and Abednego uh, in the burning fiery furnace. Uh, the furnace was so hot, uh, the Bible says, uh, that the men who put them in the furnace, uh, they died in transport. Uh, this preached to me, y'all. Uh, don't you dare uh, get close to somebody else's man made fire uh, because it just might kill you. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, but something amazing happened that day. Uh, while Shadrach, uh, Meshach, uh, and Abednego, uh, were in the fiery furnace. Uh, they fell to their knees uh, and they began to pray. Uh, oh, beloved, uh, when the fire gets turned up in your life, uh, are you going to worry? Uh, are you going to cry? Uh, but are you going to pray? Uh, I need you to pray uh, for all my worry wants. Uh, will you pray uh, for all my busy bodies? Uh, will you pray uh, for all my folk who love jumping to conclusions? Uh, will you pray uh, and declare our Father uh, who art in heaven uh, hallowed be thy name uh, I'm so glad uh, when the fire got turned up uh, these brothers began to pray uh, and at that moment uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, he asked the question uh, didn't we cast uh, three into the fire uh, I know my eyes don't fool me because uh, we put three brothers in the fire uh, then why do I see four uh, I see four loosed men uh, walking in the middle of the fire and it looks like the fourth brother looks like the son of God Nebuchadnezzar had to admit that the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego is the one true God that's the same God who stood with them in the fiery furnace and don't you know Mount Hebron that's the same God who stood with Rosa Parks as they sat on the back of the bus at the same God who stood with Nelson Mandela and ended apartheid. That the same God who will bring justice to every man and every woman of color unjustly killed by the police. And guess what, y'all? Even in this, even in this, I trust God. I trust God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleed. Or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. If you know for yourself that he watches over you, somebody shall yeah, somebody shall yeah. Somebody shout, yeah. Good day to your children. May the Lord God bless you real good. Is there anybody in here today who can declare, I trust God when the bills get low. I trust God when folk acting crazy. I trust God when they laying off folk at my job. I trust God when I don't know what tomorrow holes. I thank God. I know
know who holds tomorrow. And as we leave here today, beloved of God, I just want you, as the week progresses on, to stand on your faith. Don't get stressed out, but stand on your faith. Don't go to the bottle, but stand on your faith. Don't go to the weed, but stand on your faith. When things get dark and you feel weary, please stand on your faith. Stand on your faith. Because lady, the midnight hour, I know my God going to turn it around. Is there anybody in the house today who can declare I got faith? I got faith in the flood and in the famine. I got faith when there's folk around me and when I'm by myself. I got faith. What kind of faith you got, Pastor? A faith that reminds me. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. A faith that reminds me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I wish I had more than one person who could run around this sanctuary and thank God for the faith. Thank God for the faith. Thank God for the faith that reminds me by his stripes I am healed. A faith that reminds me that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. A faith that reminds me the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? A faith that reminds me I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth right well. Y'all excuse me. I got a memory when I can remember who I am in God no matter what some racist white person said no matter what some ignorant black person said black is beautiful and grandmama told me God don't make no junk I will remember I will remember I will remember of who I am in God and is there anybody in Mount Hebron today, who got a memory? Who got a memory? Who got a memory of who God is in your life? Well, I got to close, baby. The three Hebrew boys, they got out the furnace. And the good news is, I declare through faith that whatever you're going through, you're getting out of every heated, uncomfortable, painful, abusive, contrary situation in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I declare and decree all over Mount Hebron, I'm coming out the fire. 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 Like pure gold. Somebody shall ye. 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 For your household. For your finances. For your past. For your present. For your future. I'm coming out the fire. I'm coming out the fire. I'm coming out the fire. I'm coming out unscathed. I'm coming out unharmed. I'm coming out untouched. Because I can remember who I am. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Say it till you get it. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. Point to yourself and remind yourself. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child 
of the king. I'm a king's kid. And I know for myself, I'm going to walk where I want to. I'm going to live how I'm going to live. Because God going to get me. He going to watch over me. Because yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Huh? Ain't no fear in this house. Ain't no worry in this house. Because huh? I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm a child of the king. I need all the king's kids to open your mouth and say it. Shout for your victory. Shout for your healing. Shout for your new beginning. God got it. God got it. God got it. God got it. Because I'm a king's kid. Because I'm a king's kid. Because I'm a king's kid. Good day to your children. May the Lord God bless you real good. I got one more shout in me. And that shout is for Jesus. The one who loves me. The one who understands my thoughts are far off. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. He's been. He's been so good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. He's been so good. So good. So good. To me. Somebody say it. Won't you stand, won't you stand, won't you stand? He's been good. He's been good. If you can declare he's been good, way back at me if you know he's been good. He's been good. He's been good. I thank God today for the goodness of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, y'all. As you go into this week, don't go worrying. Don't go and be in a busybody. But do like the three Hebrew boys. When the fire get turned up, start praying. When folks are getting on your last black nerve, start praying. When Bank of America, Wells Fargo's all looking crazy, start praying. Start praying. When you don't know where to turn. I thank God today that we have the gift of eternal salvation.